Congratulations, we have accepted an offer on your home and our next step is to sign a contract with our buyers. I want to mention that I will be going over the agreement of sale with you. However, I am not an attorney. I cannot give you any legal advice and this is not me interpreting the law. So I'm going to share my screen with you now and we will begin to go over this contract. Uh, here you go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, page one of the agreement of sale, you'll see here, notice the buyer and seller read this before signing the contract. Part one explains the real estate broker and who the broker represents. Who prepared this contract? Who do they represent? The next sections of this page go into detail about attorney review and having an attorney, retaining an attorney. Either party, our buyer or seller, can have an attorney review this contract and make changes to this contract, even disapprove and cancel this contract within those three day, that three day period, which would be three business days. Uh, this is a signature page, so we will sign here and buyers will sign as well. This will indicate who prepared the contract and more often than not, a date of which the contract was prepared, although the date doesn't necessarily have to be there. The next page is the table of contents. There are 43 sections to this contract. I will go over each paragraph with you. So paragraph one here in the table of contract, uh, I'm sorry, table of contents is also here, paragraph one, parties and property description. So our buyer's full legal names will be displayed here. Their address will be here and they agree to purchase the property from us. So our, your names, your legal names will be here as the seller and your address will be here. The property that is being sold will be here, information there. And the property's municipal tax map will be here. So the municipality, the county that the property is located in and the block and lot. This will be completed if a qualifier is applicable to the sale. Paragraph two is our purchase price. So this is the price that we've agreed to with the buyer. Buyer will purchase your home for and our initial deposit what will be held in escrow that will be displayed here. If we do have an additional deposit due at a, a future date, that amount will be here. Buyer's mortgage amount will be displayed here. And then the balance of the purchase price will be here. We will initial this page as well. And so will buyers. Manner of deposit paragraph three. This indicates who will be holding the escrow deposit. So either the listing agent, the participating broker, the buyer's attorney, the title company, or somebody else. And the date that the deposit is due. If this line is blank, that means the buyer will have five business days after the fully signed contract to deliver the escrow deposit to one of these parties. If there's an additional deposit that's due, then the date will be here. Otherwise, it's 10 calendar days after the fully signed contract has been delivered to both buyer and seller. The escrow deposit, if it's being held by the title company, then the title company's name will be here. Part D, if our buyer is contingent upon obtaining a mortgage, then all of our buyer's mortgage information will be in this paragraph. When the buyer should apply for a mortgage, what is the principal amount, what is the type of loan, VA, FHA, 203K, conventional, or something else? Uh, is it a 30-year mortgage based on a 30-year payment schedule? Then this will be a date here for the written mortgage commitment. So when is that due to be delivered to us? Buyer's lender will receive a copy of this agreement of sale. So the buyer's lender will know the date that it should be delivered. However, I will keep track of this date as well and make sure that we do receive it on this specific date. If this is blank here, then the mortgage commitment is due to us 30 calendar days after the attorney review period is completed. The balance of the purchase price, this indicates what our closing date is. So that date will be reflected here. Our closing time will be established closer to our settlement. This indicates paragraph four that the buyer represents that the buyer has the cash assets um, together with the mortgage loan proceeds to complete the closing. Paragraph five is stating that the buyer and seller certify that this contract accurately reflects the gross sale price, as we discussed earlier on. Items included with the sale, paragraph six. So anything fixed to the property, shrubs, plants, fencing, uh, gas and electric fixtures, 
hot water heaters, flooring, screens, et cetera, and you'll see them all listed here, are considered fixtures and will be included with the sale unless specifically excluded in paragraph seven. In addition to these items, which are considered fixtures, this will indicate if there's anything additional included with the sale. That could be a washer, dryer, refrigerator, blinds, lighting, other things that were agreed upon when we negotiated the terms of the sale. And again, in paragraph seven would be anything that we're excluding from the sale. Paragraph eight, dates, dates and time for performance. So in our contract, we have of the essence, meaning that we have specific deadlines that must be reached in order for us to reach our closing date on time without delay. Paragraph nine, certificate of occupancy. We will need to arrange to have the CO for the property unless otherwise agreed upon in negotiations. Um, however, the seller, we will have a certificate of occupancy or the housing code letter issued for the buyer prior to closing. However, if the expense exceeds this amount here, if blank, then 1.5% of the purchase price, then we would have the option to terminate this contract and refund the buyer their deposit money. Municipal assessment will be checked has or has not if you have been notified of any special municipal assessments on your home. Quality and insurability of title, the buyer will obtain a title policy on the property Title insurance uh, and the title company will trace back uh, to find any liens and judgments on the parties involved in the, in the sale as well as the property involved. So those liens will be paid off prior to closing or at closing rather, so that we can transfer clear, clear title to the buyer. Possession, occupancy and tenancy. Will, that information will be displayed here if there's a tenancy, if it's applicable or not applicable. If this property is tenant occupied, then the information about the tenancy will be displayed here. Paragraph 13, if the property was built prior to 1978, then lead-based paint would apply and there will be a lead-based paint disclosure attached to the contract. If it does not, then this box will be checked here. This is information about lead-based paint and in explaining to the buyer, the buyer would have 10 calendar days if they wanted to test for lead-based paint. Paragraph 14, point of entry treatment system will be checked here, applicable or not applicable. And that is if there is a shared water treatment system. If there's a cesspool on the property, then it will be applicable. And then terms regarding cesspool uh, will, be, will be checked further beneath. Um, more often than not, though, this is not applicable because homes cannot be transferred with cesspool. Inspection contingency clause. The buyer will then have their opportunity to do inspections of your home. They will have 14 calendar days from the expiration of a turn of review to do their inspection. We, um, we will be notified when those inspections will be and we will co coordinate um, as such with them. In that 14 day period, they can test for radon. They can have uh, wood boring insects, which is the termite inspection done. They just need to get that done within that 14 day period and furnish us with the reports and any repair for requests that they may have. So that is all about inspections all through here. And then our responsibility to cure once we have those reports um, and their uh, request for repairs, we then have seven business days upon receipt to respond to their requests. Part F, if, there, if the property does fall within a flood hazard area, uh, and this could be deemed by their mortgage lender or their homeowner's insurance, then the buyer would have to have the appropriate insurance on the property. Part G explains qualification of inspectors. The uh, buyer's inspectors must be licensed or certified by the state of New Jersey. Buyers can research uh, Megan's Law. There's a website for that. They can research um, to see if there are any sex offenders in the uh, proximity to the home. They can also research the uh, notification regarding offsite conditions if there are any super fun sites in close proximity of the home. Part 20 explains the uh, airport safety and zoning notice, which gives the municipality and the name of the airport. 
bulk sales would apply if the home uh, was not owned by an individual and it was not a residential property, if the home uh, generated uh, income, a rental property uh, owned by an LLC, and then a bulk sales application would be applied for by the buyer. Notice to buyer concerning insurance. Buyer will need the appropriate insurance on the property if the home is being mortgaged. Maintenance and condition of the property is for us as a seller. The home should be in broom swept condition and free of debris for closing. Risk of loss, we will have the appropriate insurance on the property until closing. Buyer has the right to an initial and a final walkthrough, paragraph 25. Uh, the final walkthrough would be the day before or the day of closing. And an initial walkthrough, they could do maybe a week prior to closing, if there are inspection uh, related repairs that were being done, they could verify that those repairs were done. Paragraph 26 uh, defines the adjustments at closing and who is responsible for each uh, cost at closing. So for instance, uh, us as the sellers shall pay for the preparation of the deed, the realty transfer tax, uh, lien discharge fees, and one half of the title company fees. And then it gives a breakdown of what the buyer is responsible for, which would be title insurance, the other half of the uh, title company charges. Paragraph 27, failure of buyer or seller to close. Uh, this goes into detail of if there's a breach in the contract and who would be responsible um, in that breach. 28 consumer information statement and declaration of business relationships are in this section. And this is outlining what brokerage is representing who in this transaction. So the name of the uh, brokerage, who's the name of the agent and all of their information here, listing firm, listing agent, real estate license numbers, all contact information, email addresses. And then the equitable lien would be a lien on seller proceeds for the brokerage commission um, on the sale. And that would be defined here, commission due to the listing firm and then commission due to the particip participating firm or the buyer's broker. Paragraph 32 will be checked applicable or not applicable, uh, depending on whether or not buyer or seller is a real estate licensee. Paragraph 33, this is indicating that the brokers will receive the closing disclosure and other documents from the buyer's lender. 34 professional referrals. This is a hold harmless. If I were to give you uh, any referrals, a moving company um, or whatnot, that you would do your own due diligence on those tradespeople or professionals and uh, not hold myself or Keller Williams responsible. Attorney review, paragraph 35, one through three. This is explaining that once the contract is fully executed, there is a three business day attorney review period. Saturday and Sundays do not count. Uh, either party can retain an attorney to review this contract and even disprove of this contract. 36 is the acceptable notices. Um, they can be certified mail, fax, email, overnight courier, or electronic document. 37, this contract cannot be assigned without written consent of the seller. 38 is explaining that electronic signatures are acceptable forms. Uh, you are actually going to be signing this contract electronically, and any future. Um, document or addendum can also be signed electronic. Corporate resolution, if this applies, if buyer or seller is a corporate or other entity. Paragraph 40, this is the entire agreement, um, contains the entire agreement of the parties. No representation have been made by any of the parties, the brokerage or its salesperson. This contract, what it states here, applicable laws. This contract shall be governed by and construed in accordance with the laws of the state of New Jersey. And paragraph 14, the addenda. So if anything here is checked, then it applies to our contract. So if our buyer has a property sale contingency, that this contract is subject to the sale of their home, then this will be checked. If our property falls in a condominium, condominium or a homeowners association, then this box will be checked. There is a coronavirus COVID-19 addendum. If that's checked, then that will be attached to the contract. If our buyer is obtaining FHA or VA financing, then this will be a check and there will also be an addendum regarding FHA and VA loans. 
if our property is built prior to 1978, we will have a lead-based paint disclosure and that box will be checked. If we are new construction, that will be checked. If our home has private sewer or private well, we will have addendums to this contract reflective of that and those boxes will be checked. If our property has three or more units, we'll check that. If there's a seller concession that we've agreed to pay some or all of buyer's closing costs, we will have an addendum indicating how much we are paying and this box will be checked. If our sale is a short sale and subject to bank approval, then this box will be checked and we'll have an addendum attached to this contract. If we have solar panels on our home, we'll check this box and we will have a solar panel addendum. If we have a swimming pool, again, there will be a swimming pool addendum that clearly defines what is included with the pool, accessories and equipment. And we'll check that box. And if there's an underground oil tank, that box will be checked. Any other additional contract provisions will be in this box. And this would be anything that we've agreed upon with the buyer that will be made part of our contract and I will have outlined it. The last page of our contract is a wire fraud notification. And it's just indicating to you to not wire any funds to any party um, without consulting with myself, the title company or your attorney first. You as a seller should not be asked to wire any funds at all. So just be very mindful of wire fraud. So that is our contract. If you have any further questions about it or would like to me to go over it in more detail uh, as a further review, I absolutely have no problem doing so. Uh, you simply send me a text, an email, or a phone call, or give me a call and we'll go over it further. And then we'll uh, move on to step two once this is fully executed.